What is going on guys and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different on the channel. I'm going to be watching and reacting to viral TikTok videos about running, giving you my honest opinion and feedback about the videos and whether or not I agree with the advice that they happen to be giving or just the overall information about the video. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on to it and watch some TikToks. You run 21 miles an hour, I'll give you 100 bucks. And the Timberlands. Right, here we go, Nick Simmons. Yeah, what's your name? Ooh, 18? Okay. 18 miles an hour, not bad, dude, honestly, for just regular dude walking down the street. 18 miles an hour is no joke. Way under sub four minute per mile pace. Bring it in, what's your name? Nice to meet you. Thanks for watching on YouTube. I was, but thank you. I used to subscribe. <laughs> nice. Nice job. Yeah, man, shout out to Nick Simmons. Great guy, makes awesome videos. He's a total grinder when it comes to the YouTube, uh, his company Run Gum, which I think is awesome. Really, really cool. I did do a video with him one time and uh, participated in one of his challenges when he was down at Huntington a couple years back, I think in like October, November of 2020. So if you want to go check out that video, I'll link it up top so you guys can check that out. We did one of those pacer test videos on the sand. A lot of fun. Really nice meeting Nick Simmons. Really, really great guy and awesome for the running community. So shout out to Nick. This one looks good. Cool. Feet don't need support. Is this true? I keep seeing people on TikTok raving barefoot about running. How good Here it we is go. go. Barefoot, barefoot running. And that shoes ruin your feet. And I wanted to give this a try. So I decided to go and for a 5K run. All the rocks. I went on all different Jeez. terrains. I started at the beach. This wasn't too bad because there was a lot of sand and water, which was quite soft. But it did move yeah, to dude. the rocks. Which Why are you running for the rocks, dude? That's I then real. moved on to tarmac and grass. This wasn't too bad, actually. But every now and again, I stamped on a pebble, which hurt a lot. The whole time I was running, I was just thinking of how oh, dirty man. my feet are and all of the germs <laughs> that they're picking up. It's yeah. quite bad now. At the end of the run, my feet were hurting and covered in dirt. I wouldn't do this again, and I do not recommend it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so barefoot running, a lot of people swear by this. They love to do it. A lot of people say that running uh, with regular running shoes destroy your feet. I know a lot of people who have been running for 50, 60 plus years are a lot more advanced in age, and they've been running since the 70s and the 80s with running shoes the entire time, and they're still very fit. Their feet are fine. Their feet are not destroyed in any way. I know that's a little bit anecdotal, but I don't think really that just running shoes in and of itself are going to destroy your feet over time. You're not stretching properly. You're not um, recovering properly, cooling down, warming up. Your diet's bad. That might be part of the reason your body deteriorates in, you know, uh, in the long term. However, I did do a video where I did run barefoot for a week. I'll link that so you guys can check it out if you want to do. And I do say that there were some good aspects of it that I enjoyed a lot. Running on grass, running in the earth, you definitely get that grounded feeling. It feels really nice. You feel kind of at peace. The indoor fins are really nice. You get a different kind of runner's high, I think. Obviously, of course, I would assume that people that are running barefoot probably aren't too concerned about running competitively or anything like that. So that shouldn't be an issue, but definitely something if you want to try out, you should. Don't do it like this guy and run on pebbles or anything like that. But uh, yeah, barefoot running can definitely be advantageous in some ways, and I still incorporate it every once in a while when I can. So yeah, on to the next video. That's an amazing transformation. Uh, I don't think that's probably just from running. I'm sure she also, you know, was eating a good diet and everything. But yeah, running can definitely help change your life and, um, you know, get you more fit and healthy if that is something you want to become. Doing long distance running is going to help you burn more calories and help you get in a calorie deficit much more easily. That's really awesome. It worked out for that girl and it can work out for you too if that's something you're after. Tying running shoes. Let's check this one out. How you're actually supposed to wear running shoes. Ah. Uh. This little hole is called a heel oh, lock. The runner's not. Here we go. To use it. All right, let's try this out. Same side lace goes through the hole. Yep. Opposite side lace goes through that loop. <laughs> and <laughs> heel locked. Okay, yeah. So that's something known as the runner's not. Very common among runners. I personally, in the ten years I have done running. I have never used a runner's knot. I've never felt the need to, never really experienced heel slippage. If heel slippage is something you do um, 
uh, experience or have a trouble with with your running shoes, trying the runner's knot might be something you want to do. I personally have never tried it, honestly, so maybe I should do it and maybe it'd be better. But yeah, in the 10 years of running, I actually have never done a runner's knot. So don't feel like it's something you need to do or that it's absolutely imperative that you put on a runner's knot when you do your runner sh when you put on a running shoe. It's not absolutely at all a necessity. I have never used it. And a lot of the people I know also that have been running for years and years and years have never used a runner's knot. The midway point of an eight-year-old's first mile run. Here we go. <laughs> it's a little it's a video of a little girl running some kind of relay race it looks like because she has a baton she's eight years old and she says i hate this um during her mile relay and um i know it's kind of like a joke video and something that's definitely obviously very funny um but yeah, if, if running is something you want your kids to do, but they don't want to do it, you know, running is not for everybody. I've said this before in multiple videos. A lot of people just, you know, don't like running, but then when they try it out, they come to like it. Some people try out running. Uh, they don't like running. They try it out anyway, and they still hate it, and they end up not liking it. And if you don't like it, or you don't want to do it, and you'd rather do some other form of awesome exercise that's going to help you lose weight and, you know, um, keep you healthy and fit and all that good stuff more power to you. Go with that. I know a few people personally who ran from a very young age, five, six, seven years old, ran in junior Olympics and ended up burning out relatively quickly. They really didn't like running competitively anymore. And I don't know if it has to do fully with that fact, but I remember them saying consistently that they didn't really love running when they were growing up in the junior Olympics, but their parents were really into it and kind of not forced them, but really coaxed them into doing that. And I think that could partially contribute to the reason why they burned out so quickly as, you know, seniors in high school, freshmen in college. So if running isn't something you like doing, don't do it and don't force, force someone else to do it just because you think it's awesome and that they should get into it. If they don't like doing it, don't make them do it. If you don't like doing it, don't do it. There's a million other things made that are amazing to do in this world besides running. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, so this guy was on, on the gym, you know, looks more of like a lifter now. Said he used to do cross country and running on the treadmill, you know, just running in general brought back memories for him. It's awesome to hear. Says he has a love-hate relationship with running and honestly could not agree more with that statement. Over the last 10 years of running, some days I love running, other days I hate running, and I've learned to just, you know, roll with the punches. You're not gonna wanna get up every day and the first thing on your mind is not gonna be, oh, I can't wait to go for a run. And you, even when, you know, sometimes you might think you wanna go for a run, you drive to your run, you warm up everything, then you start running and you're like, this sucks. You don't want to run for that day. It's very common. It happens all the time to me too. And I've learned to, you know, push through that. And by the time I'm finished with the run, I always am thankful that I got through it and happy that I made that choice to go out and run and, you know, do that every day. But it's a constant struggle just because I've been running for 10 years and I love running so much, but that doesn't mean that I am in love with it every single second. Definitely a love-hate relationship with running. Can totally relate to that. And I think a lot of people um, maybe that are watching this video can also relate to that as well, but... <laughs> Yeah, so her three tips, not bad at all. Uh, first one, to get sleep, recovery is very important. Definitely something that's huge. Uh, if you don't get enough sleep, your body's not gonna recover well and your running performance will probably drop uh, in a pretty drastic way. So second one, she says to make sure you're stretching, obviously a good one. I myself don't do a ton of static stretching, don't really think it's absolutely necessary. I like doing active drills and kind of like, um movement stretches and stuff. Um, if you guys want to check out the video I have posted about what I do before and after runs, I can tag that as well. So you guys can check that out if you want to check out my before and after stretching routine. The third one she said um, is to incorporate a both speed workout days and easy days. Definitely true, of course. Any good training plan is going to have some workout days and you know your off days, your easy days, your moderate days, all that good stuff. And the last thing she mentioned was smile. Running is supposed to be fun. If you want to smile on your runs, go for it. Honestly, I do smile on my runs sometimes when I'm thinking about something that makes makes me happy and I want to smile or my friends, I'm running with my friends and they say something funny or crack a joke or we're messing around, then I laugh. But in general, for the most part, I'm not always smiling and having a good time. You don't need to smile if you don't want to. I love running and it makes me happy. Yes, but I'm not always smiling when I run. So no, you don't have to smile when you run. But if you want to smile and that helps your mood and helps you, you know, encourages you to keep running and, you know, getting after it, then go for it and smile. But do you have to do it? Of course not. Look at this. R benefits of running with a resistance band. I want to look at this. Running 12 miles with a resistance band. 
mandates us to keep our arms at a 45 degree angle, baby. Okay, whoa. Which creates positive forward momentum. <laughs> I've never seen excessive that. Excessive movements. <laughs> Mandates core, chest, back, and shoulders to become more engaged. Which means heart, lungs, and diaphragm does more work. Which means cardiovascular and cardiorespiratory systems are enhanced greatly. Which means fatigue rate is decreased and endurance and stamina skyrockets. As a result, overall running form, economy, and efficiency improves drastically. Okay, I've never heard of this ever, just going to be honest. It has a ton of views, 500,000 likes, so it probably has millions and millions of views. Never seen anything like this, never heard of it. Um, a problem I see is, you know, maybe your arms are too low, or you're kind of flailing your arms around a little bit. All your body should be working in harmony. You should have that kind of, like, nice cadence, uh, you know, with your arms swinging when you run. You know, I like to go somewhere around, like, chest level or so, usually. Maybe if I'm going a little bit slower pace, maybe a little bit lower, like the bottom of my chest. But in general, yeah, I try to have that. I've never heard of running with a resistance band. I don't know if it's exactly be a great idea, because it kind of might, you might be fighting your body's natural mechanics, because not everyone is going to have it perfectly in the pocket like if you've seen a lot of different pro runners even them at the you know the top top highest level when they're running the 10,000 meters they're all going to have a little bit of an arm swing some people are going to go a little bit you know more out to the sides maybe is that the most efficient maybe not but that's what works for them and you know kind of keeps their body in harmony and keeps them working the most efficiently that they see fit for them so would I suggest this I don't know if I would do a 12 mile run without resistance band if I were to try this out I might try like a couple miles and see but I feel like if I went for a 12 mile run and had that and had that whole like pulling the mo feeling the whole time on a 12 mile run I feel like I would take that off and my arms would be shot because it would be something I wasn't used to I don't know I mean maybe this is something maybe someone can comment on this down below if you've ever tried anything like this out I've never heard of this but I don't know maybe it could work very very interesting for sure though so that is all the videos we're going to be reviewing today on TikTok if you enjoyed this kind of reaction type video and commentary let me know down in the comments and I'd be happy to make more of these videos for you if you didn't let me know as well because I'm always open to criticism and constructive feedback. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, be good humans, do good things, search for happiness. Peace.